Hi, so welcome to the live stream today. Very, a very good afternoon to you as you join us on the, uh, on the stream today as we continue with our discussion for the December 2022 examination. And uh, yesterday we had a, you know, premiere and uh, had a couple of discussion and uh, voila, by the time we finish, the results have been released by the ICA. So now I believe that you have been able to check your results and... Uh, uh, whatever be the case, some people pass, some people did not pass, whatever be the case, the most important thing is for you to, uh, if you couldn't go through, you were not successful with the uh, exams, it means that you just have to work hard, put in the effort, put in the sacrifices, so you can position yourself to then pass the exams in uh, December 2022, if you want to race it for the paper, but it is very important that you race it as soon as possible, so you position yourself to pass the examination. So I see some of you guys joining. Uh, welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video. But most importantly, let's talk. Let me hear from you where you are watching us from. And also, um, how was your results and what are your plans for uh, December 2022? Any questions that you would uh, you want me to uh, answer or something you would want me to share my thought on? Maybe you are looking at subject combination now that your results have been released. Subject combination, what do you do? Or maybe you have already selected the subjects that you are writing and you're looking for you know the key topics that you have to focus on and the way you need to study in order to position yourself to pass the exam so let me hear from you put in the comment section for me in the chat box any questions you have for me and we're going to be sharing with you a couple of uh, issues that you need to understand in order for you to position yourself to pass the examination. Uh, remember that our enrollment is ongoing and we're going to be starting with our live lectures on 5th of uh September 2022. That means next week, next two weeks, Friday. Did I say next two weeks, Friday? Can you imagine that? Next two weeks, um, you know, uh, Monday, we're going to be starting with the lectures and we will be able to provide you with your uh, assistance in that case. So you can enroll, get access to our live uh, lectures and also the recorded le lectures. You get access to a live practice question on the portal. Now, one of the issues that, uh, you know, came up uh, as uh, people have checked their results and I've been having discussion with uh, some of the people, one of the issues that came up with the fact was the fact that, hey, uh, Ishira, I think that I have problem with time in the exam hall because uh, by the end of the three hours, 
all I did was to be able to answer just three questions. And even though I was hoping that with the three questions that I answered, I would be able to pass the examination, it didn't work out too good for me. So I wasn't able to pass the examination. So that is one of the problems, timing in the exam hall. The reason is that, you see, I say this always, sometimes, you know, uh, when people fail the exams, it is not that they don't know. Because, you know, some of you, you put in your all, you put in your effort, you put in your sacrifices, and you expect that, hell yes, when these results come, I'm going to do well. Only for the results to come, you check the results and, uh-oh, you're still below 50, so you did not pass. So sometimes people fail the exams, not necessarily because they don't understand the subject or they don't understand the topic or they don't, uh, you know, have a comprehension, a deeper understanding of the questions that have been asked by the examiner. But the problem is time. The problem is time. That is why we are launching the online live practice question session. What it means is that you read the question and then the clock will be ticking. You read the questions and the clock will be ticking. You read a question and the clock will be ticking. So if it is a two minutes question or a question that you have to use two minutes to process, two minutes count down, by the two minutes, it's over. Now, that way you are able to, you know, practice this over the entire period and you're going to go over this a couple of times. So you finish with a topic, you go and answer the questions. You finish with a topic, you go and answer the questions. That way you are applying the principles and also working on your efficient time management in the exam or ultimately so that you can pass the examination. Because that is one of the things that really came up uh, when I was having discussion with some of my students as we were going through uh, their uh, results. Then you will also get access to, you know, our examination analysis documents, something that we're going to be issuing uh, this semester and giving out to our students to help you to look at the key issues that you have to focus on to increase your chances of passing the examination. Subject to terms and conditions, pass first time is guaranteed because the contents that we have available, the structure of our program, and the way we design our program, you have to go in there and one time you will be able to pass the examination. So, you know, you can enroll, you can check the link in the description of this video or download the Insura Premium Mobile application on the Google Play Store or the App Store, then you'll be able to register and study under my mentorship. Now, let me know any other questions, any questions for me. How was your results? What are you expecting <clears throat> to do coming in December 2022? What are your goals? I mean, what, is, what subject are you writing? And uh, do you want me to, or are there any things that you want me to share uh, my thoughts on? This is a Q&A session. I'm going to provide you with some strategies as well to enable you to be able to focus on specific subjects so that you can ultimately pass the examination. I'm seeing a comment coming in from uh, Dennis. Uh, Mensa said, hey, Inshira, I'm Dennis and I'm watching you from UEW. Okay, thanks for joining us, Dennis. Philip said, your students. Okay, yeah, Philip, thank you for joining us. And then we have Dennis Kiwanga said, nice to join you, sir. Always a pleasure. Benjamin Beidu said, Benjamin Beidu from Accra. Okay, thanks for joining us on the stream uh, today, Benjamin, uh, for having us or coming on the stream today and joining us. So if you are writing the December 2022 examination, yesterday I shared some thoughts uh, with you on the various things that you need to uh, look out for and how you need to position yourself to pass the examination. What I want to do today is, you know, share my thought on specific subjects and what you need to do in the specific subjects to pass the examination. So for those of you who are watching live or even if you are watching the playback, you can put in the description or in the chat what subjects you are writing, then I can provide you with uh, some strategies, some techniques on how you need to study to be able to position yourself to pass the examination. Like I mentioned, there are a couple of things that you need to understand in order for you to put yourself in the sport to pass the examination. Yes, definitely you have to go through the syllabus, attend the lectures, understand the basic principles, practice a lot of questions. But you see, one of the reasons why practicing a lot of questions is also crucial for your examination is your ability to be able to really time yourself. 
this is very important. You see, because it is one thing to think you know the topic, to, to think you understand the topic. It's another thing when a question is set or put before you and you are trying to answer, you are trying to apply. Because some of you, if we give you five hours or six hours, you can pass the exams. You may pass the exams if we give you five hours or six hours. But you see, the truth of the matter is that we don't have that luxury available. The exams is three hours. You have your reading time of 15 minutes. So three hours, 15 minutes, boom, it's gone. Everything is done. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, how can I process the information as soon as possible in the exam hall? Then how can I write my answers out as soon as possible in line with what the examiner is expecting? So let's take some subjects one after the other and let's share some thoughts on them briefly. So let me bring up my screen and then we're going to be sharing some thoughts uh, briefly on some of the issues that you need to do and some of the things that you need to you know, take into consideration and give you some practical example on what I'm trying to you know, say here. Give you some practical example on what I'm trying to say here. Let me bring up my screen on the chat here. So let's say you are looking at this particular question here. Let, let's say this is a financial reporting. So let's say you're looking at, you know, the question two, financial sure reporting. Understand. Let's say you're reading the financial reporting. So I'm going to, you know, go through the script with you, provide you with some strategies, and then, you know, we look at some of the few issues that we need to look out for. So let's say you read the question. So First, let's read the preamble of the question. What is the preamble of the question? Very simple. He says that uh, Hiba or Hiba Limited is a Ghanaian company located in the Bono region. The year 2020 presented challenges for Hiba and company, and the company is putting in measures to mitigate these challenges. The company prepares its financial statements to 31st December each year. Now, as you are reading the question, it is important to identify what are the fundamental issues, what are the key issues that you have to take into consideration or that you have to be mindful of. So, for instance, you need to be mindful of the year ended. You need to be mindful of the year ended. So, the year ended is, you know, 31st December each year. That is the year ended, 31st December each year. Okay, the directors are unsure of the application of the financial reporting standards on the specific transactions that took place during the accounting period. So this is a preamble. So from the preamble you read, the only thing that you are interested in is the financial year end. Anything else there, it's not something you are excited about. So that is what you are interested in, in the preamble. Then you come to the requirements of the question. It says, discuss 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 how the above transaction i i i i should be treated in hebe's financial statements for the year ended 31st december 2021 in accordance with the ifrs standards show all calculations wherever possible keyword here is discuss discuss so when the question says discuss what the heck does that mean it means that you got to discuss. So you're going to write English. So it's a written question. So you're going to be writing some comments. And then you make some calculation. Comments and calculation. Because the examiner says discuss. Comments and because the examiner says discuss. So if the examiner is saying discuss how the above transaction I to I, I, I should be treated, show all calculation wherever possible. Discuss. So it means you're going to be speaking English. So you speak English and where there is calculation, you do the calculation. But then you need to ask yourself, how do I start with the issue about discuss? The examiner says, discuss. How do I start it? How, how, what do I do? So let, let me just give you an example. Let's look at the first scenario there. Now, this is financial reporting. So in the exam hall, you don't have time to think. I say this always. If you're going to be thinking in the exam hall, your thinking in the exam hall should start 
30 minutes to stop work. 30 minutes to stop work, you can start thinking. But when you start the exams, you cannot start thinking. So immediately you read a question, it must occur to you what the heck is going on. What the heck is going on? So let's take a scenario here. So let's look at the II. It's a common issues financial instrument. On 1st January 2021, remember our year ended is 31st December 2021. So 1st January 2021 is at the beginning of the year. It says that Hiba issued... 1.5 million shares. Heba issued 1.5 million shares. Now, immediately I hear issue of shares. I know that is IFRS 9 financial instrument. I know that is IFRS 9 that is financial instrument. So immediately I hear issue of shares. My uh, subconsciously, your brain should click IFRS 9 financial instrument. But what type of shares? It says that one Ghana City one point for one point five million dollars each. The share is convertible, so this is convertible uh, shares convertible into two ordinary share having power value of zero point one million each. Interest uh, is payable at eight percent per annum on thirty first December each year. On the date of issue, market interest for similar debts you know, without conversion option was 11% per annum. Hiba expect that the conversion option will, will not be exercised. So this is convertible loan notes. This is convertible loan notes. Now, the context of the question doesn't, you know, communicate it clear because it says shares, but it's giving you debts issue. Because it says issued uh, 1.5 million shares, one Ghana CD each for 1.5. So on one side it is shares, but it is giving you information about debt. So really this is about convertible loan notes that is being issued by the company. If it is a convertible loan note in accordance with IAS 32, financial instruments, presentation and recognition, and IFRS 9, it has to be splitted into debt component and equity component. So remember the requirement of the question. The requirement of the question says discuss. Discuss. So you have two options. Option number one is to speak the English. That the above transaction. So uh, if I'm answering this question, I'm going to say that, you know, Heba Limited, whatever the heck, that is II. So we say that the above transaction, for instance, the above transaction shall be accounted for, shall be accounted for in accordance, shall be accounted for in accordance. I see some of you guys joining. Give us a thumbs up on the video and also um, put it in the chat for me. Put any questions that you have for us in the chat for us as well, so we can uh, provide you with some answers to help you to prepare well for your examination. So put in the chat any questions you have for me really quick. So the above transaction shall be accounted for in accordance with IAS 32 financial instrument presentation as it is a compound financial instrument you know just i'm just writing fast as it is a compound financial instrument which must be splitted or divided into debts and equity components. Are you, are you following me? Very important. So this is what is happening here. This is what is happening here. This is what is happening here. So you, you see that the examiner says, discuss. Then he says, show all calculation wherever possible. So immediately I read the question, the I, I, I know this is a financial instrument question, IFRS 9. So if it is a financial instrument question, IFRS 9 or IAS 32, uh, presentation of financial instruments, 
How do I account for it? Quickly, it is a convertible loan note. So it means we have to split it between the debt component and the equity component. So once I write this English down, then I now look at the calculation. And then you go ahead with the various calculations that you have to do. Uh, calculate the debt components, calculate the equity components. We're not going to be going into that. We'll solve these questions uh, later on as we build our knowledge in this. But, but that is what you're doing. That is what you do. So, so in the exam hall, we don't have time to delay. We don't have time to stop. It is very important that once you read a question, it occurs to you, what standard is this? What, what is the examiner asking? And then how can I solve this question as early as possible? Now, if you have a follower of my work, we've done financial instrument. We've solved questions relating to financial instruments. And this is a four-mark question. It's no brainer. You should be able to get that answer or the marks easily without thinking much. So that is the first thing. That is the first thing. But if in the exam hall, you read this question, then you sit down. Uh, issue of shares, 1.5 million. Uh, convertible on 31st December 2025. Into two, See, the, the answer to this question, the information given is useless here. This 31st December 2025 converted into two shares of no power value. You're not going to use it for anything apart from the conversion of the debt. Okay, we're going to use that just in determining the debt component, that is all. But it's not going to have uh, an impact on the subsequent measurement of the debt generally at the end of the day. So if you are thinking about, oh, converting to, okay, so it is 1.5. We are converting if every two shares into 0 0.5. You don't need that. And, and how can you know this is the thing I'm supposed to do when you read the question? How can you know that this is what I'm supposed to do when you read a question? You can only know that if you have practiced a lot of questions. If you have practiced a lot of questions. Once you practice a lot of questions, you'll be able to put yourself in the position to answer the question. So Kelly Koroma said, uh, thanks a lot. You have been a great help through my accounting process. Kelly from Sierra Leone. Okay, thank you, Kelly, for joining us. Um, Clinton said, hi. Hello, Clinton. Thanks for joining us as well today uh, on the stream. So that is the thing. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say here is that in the exam hall, the time between when you read the question and answering the question must be reduced to a smaller, you know, the, it, immediately you read a question, it should occur to you. You don't have to think. Immediately you read a question, you should know that, okay, I'm applying this rule. And this is how we solve this question. But if you take time to think about the question, then you are going to waste time on it. Then you're going to waste time on it. But how do you reduce the time of, uh, you know, reading the question and answering the question? It is through studying and practicing a lot of questions over a long period of time. Because if you have been able to practice a lot of questions or questions over a long period of time, that will put you in the position to be able to then answer the questions as quick as possible. So there are some of you, it's not that you don't know what you're doing, but it is lack of, you know, your ability to be able to read a question and understand the question and answer the question as quick as possible. It's a four mark question. So as per the marking scheme, 1.8 times four is gonna give us what? Let me punch that out. 1.8 times four, no, sorry. It means I'm supposed to use seven minutes. Can you imagine that? I'm supposed to use seven minutes for this question. Seven minutes for this particular question here. So note, I put my, you know, English up. He says you should discuss. So I tell the examiner, okay, the above transaction will be accounted for as per the standard. Then I do my calculation, 7.2 minutes. 
7.2 minutes. So if you spend 15 minutes trying to answer just this question, you're going to fail. If you spend 15 minutes trying to answer a four mark question, you will fail. And if that occurs in various other questions, you will see that at the end of the day, there are 20, sorry, there are 20 mark questions, but you end up answering just two or three questions. And that means you will fail. So it is very important you work on your timing. It's very important you work on your timing. And that goes ahead with any other question. That goes ahead with any other question. Look at the other question, another four marks. Again, if it is four marks, we're going to use 7.2 minutes. Okay? If it is four marks, we're going to use 7.2 minutes. So it, mean, it means that, you know, <laughs> this thing is funny, okay? It means that the 7.2 minutes is for both reading and working. No? Technically, that is what it means. It's for reading and working. So the longer you spend on, on, on a, 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 the time on a certain question, the worse you are at of passing the examination. So look at the III. It says that Heber received the notice on 1st January 2021. That, now remember 1st January 2021 is the beginning of the year. That an ex-employee has filed a lawsuit alleging unjust dismissal. Now, immediately I hear that, okay, we receive uh, a notice of a lawsuit that is provisions. So that is IAS 37. Provisions, contingent liability, contingent assets. Now, if you remember our explanation, there are two types of provisions generally. We have what we call asset-related provisions and non-asset-related provision. Asset-related provisions, the initial measurement shall be included in the initial cost of the asset. Non-asset provisions, the initial measurement shall be recognized in the PL account. So this is a non-asset provision. It's an employee who is suing us for unfair dismissal. So I have to do the initial measurement and account for it in the PL account. Then on subsequent measurement or winding, that will also be taken to the PL account so that the carrying amount of the provision will be taken onto the statement of financial position. So immediately you read the question. The accounting standard to, must occur. The principle that you must apply has to occur. If it doesn't, then you are on your way to failure. Remember, you have to process all of these in 7.2 minutes. Processing all these in 7.2 minutes. Can you imagine that? So look at it. It says that according to legal advice from the company's legal department, Hiba had an 85% likelihood of losing the case and will be required to pay compensation of 1.1275 million on January 2022. So that is a year from now. So remember the requirement of our questions. question. It says, discuss. So what English can I write here? Okay, so for this question, I could put up an English and say that, okay, the transaction III will be accounted for in accordance with the transaction will be accounted for in accordance with in accordance with IAS 37 provisions, contingent liabilities, contingent assets with the initial measurement with the initial measurement recognized in the profit or loss and the subsequent measurement or the unwinding of finance cost also recognized in the profit or loss. while the current amounts of the provision while the current amount of the provision is recognized in current liability are you getting the idea here so that is the english 
Then quickly, I need to do the calculation. This is not a, 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 a serious calculation. I just discount it into the present and the discounting factor has been given to me. So what do I do? I just take the money available. So initial measurement, I am initial measurement on 1st January 2021 is simply going to be the money we owe 1.275. Is that the figure? Yeah, 1.275. Multiply by the, you know, uh, annuity, uh, sorry, discounting factor given to us, 0 0.914, then you get your answer. So, 7.2 minutes. This is my concern. Oh. You have to do this in 7.2 minutes. So speed and accuracy is crucial. Speed and accuracy is crucial. And you can only do this if you understand. So when you read a question, IS-37 doesn't okay. And the principle of IS-37 that all provisions can be categorized into assets related and non-assets related, then you can solve this question. You'll be chewing your pen, the pen top, you'll be thinking about it over and over again, but it is not going to bring you anything. But how can you really work in 7.2 minutes? Because somebody's like, yo, the exams, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot. And I wasn't able to finish before I realized the time is gone. I see you will not do anything with the time. The time will not be increased. At least now. It's three hours. So nothing will be done on the time. But the question is, you are supposed to use 7.2 minutes for a question. But some of you may use 20 minutes for that same question. So if you spend 20 minutes doing a four-mark question, then you are on the way to fail. Definitely you are on your way to fail. All other things being equal. So what, what, do I, what am I trying to say generally? What I'm trying to tell you is this, that in order to pass, for you to pass the examination, it's not just about studying. It's not just about attending lectures. You have to practice questions under time. You need to train yourself to work under pressure. That's, that's the deal. That's the deal. That is why here, especially we do the performance evaluation test. That is why we give people assignments. And that is why now we are also launching the live practice question portal. Because it is important. There are some of you, you are like, yo, I just want to attend lectures and, uh, you know, one week to the exams, I can go and write the exams. No. It's not just about attending lectures. It's not just about reading. It's not just about studying. It's not just about watching my YouTube videos. It's not just about watching the videos on our portal. That's not it alone. You must sit down, practice questions under time. Because time is your enemy in the exam hall. Because many of you, you could pass the exams, but your results came and you were not able to pass. You don't need to beat yourself up. It means time was against you. Generally, one of the re reasons. So some of you, it's not because you are you didn't know, but it's because time was against you. So that throughout the three hours, you were, you were able to do just three questions or you answered four questions. Remember, you are supposed to attempt as many questions as, as possible within the time given or within the time allocated. So, as you prepare for December 2022, I want you to work on that. I want you to put yourself in the position to work on that. You need to work on your timing. You need to work on it. So, it's not just about, yeah, I have registered for a class. I'm attending lectures. Then you're attending, attending, attending lectures for 12 weeks. And then you go to the exam hall and write the exams. No. You must create time to study on your own. You must create time to practice questions under time. 
That's it. So look at the questions that I am showing you here. This is the August 2022. You're supposed to use 7.2 minutes. But somebody may use 15 minutes for this question. Someone may even spend, you know, more than 10 minutes on this question. Immediately you are doing that, you are eating into other questions time. And the reason is you are not able to understand the principle very well and you have not studied and practiced questions under time. That's what you have to understand. That's, that's what you must do if you want to really pass the examination. I see some questions coming in. Let me see if I can take them uh, quickly. Hello, sir. That is, this is Dia Boatin said. Hello, sir. Is it necessary to prepare financial statement extracts when the question requires to discuss how it will be recognized in the financial statement? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Because uh, the description aspects, like what I, uh, I did here, primarily this question was for us to, you know, explain how, discuss how it should be prepared, presented in the financial statement, and then we should show all calculation where possible. So even if the question just said, discuss how it should be represented in the financial statement, you could just write an English to explain the account, the rules or the accounting standard and the rules or the principles for recognizing such transactions. Then you do the calculations and then you extract the financial statement. I hope that makes sense. So definitely, as it says, discuss, you put down some English explaining the principle on how the item is supposed to be treated in the financial statement. Then you can now present it, uh, do your calculation and present it in the financial statement. So that is the issue there. That is the issue there. Let me know if that is uh, uh, helpful for you. Matthew Jassy said, hello, sir, watching from Gambia. Uh, thanks for your lectures. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, Matthew, for joining us on the stream today. Maxwell Michael said, I do really help me in my studies. Ooh, I don't know. You said, I think you said, okay, you do really help me in my studies. Okay, that's great to hear. Uh, Maxwell, thanks for joining us on the stream. If there are any questions, you put it in the chat for me or you put it in the comments uh, session for me, and I'm going to be providing you with some answers as we uh, continue with our discussion. So that is the thing that you need to understand. So it is not just about I'm attending lectures. It's not just about every week I go for lectures. You have to sit down and solve questions. And it's not just about solving questions at your own pace when you feel like it, but it's about solving questions under pressure, thinking under pressure, because you need to put yourself in that sport to be able to pass the exams. Yesterday, I was telling you this, that the ICA examination is getting better and better. Okay, the, you know, the quality of the exams, it's, it's really getting interesting. So, like I said yesterday, if you're somebody who is an OG and you think you can just sit down, wake up and uh, do some shabo shabo work and go into the exam hall, then you're smoking something because you go and fail. So because the structure of the exams, the wording of the questions, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the entire approach of the ICA exams now, it's you have to understand the principles. You have to understand the concept. You cannot do Isha La Baba and bring it here. You cannot do a Radie Medawasi and come and pass the examination. So as you prepare to study, as you prepare to attend lectures, you need to also make time to practice questions under time. That's how you'll be able to pass the examination. That's how you'll be able to pass the examination. So that is the thing that you need to really understand if you want to position yourself uh, to be able to pass the coming, I guess, uh, December 2022 examination as we get excited on various things that you need to understand and how you need to go through uh, these things in the exam hall. It's very important. It's very important. So what, are, what is my uh, takeaway then uh, overall on the overall? My takeaway on the overall is assess yourself and then go in into December. But change your attitude, especially if you fail the exams, it means you did not do something right. So don't sit down, beat yourself up, because, you know, sitting down, thinking about it, beating yourself up, 
will not change the issue, will not add anything. Yes, uh, it's 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 painful. It's quote unquote a little embarrassing, and uh, you may lose confidence, and you may want to even stop doing it. But you have to still go ahead and continue to do it because that is the only way you can become successful. So my takeaway here is look at the syllabus very well. Look at the structure of the exams very well. But most importantly, you need to attend lectures, understand the principles, practice a lot of questions under time. Practice a lot of questions under time. Practice a lot of questions a lot of questions under time. Once you're able to do that, you practice a lot of questions under time, you put yourself in the position in order for you to pass the examination. You put yourself in the position in order for you to pass the examination. And that is what I want to you know, share with you today as we uh, try to look at those various things that you need to look out for to position you to be able to you know, pass the examination. And uh, God willing, on Monday, I'll be coming your way as we uh, begin with the live stream sessions and uh, begin our real discussions. And uh, we're going to be sharing thoughts on the key areas that you need to focus on, how you're going to be studying uh, specific subjects going into December 2022 and uh, all of those things as you uh, you know, prepare to pass the examination. And that is what I want to share with you today. Thank you very much for you know joining me on the stream. and. Uh, you know, I'll catch you same time on Monday as we continue with our discussion. Remember, like I said earlier, whatever be the case, maybe the results was not what you expected, but it is what it is. You feel me? It is what it is. So what you're going to do is just sit down, re-strategize, and then find out how you can work on your time, how you can work on understanding the principles, and how you can work on really being able to attempt a lot of questions in the exam hall so you can increase your chances of passing the examination coming December 2022. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you same time on Monday as we continue with our discussion at 4.30 p.m. Stay safe and have a blissful weekend. Bye-bye.